Good day, everyone. We're here with a Blind Rivers coach, uh, Kyle Breck. How are you today, Kyle? Good, you too. For having me. Good, good. First things first, talk a little bit about this past 22, 23 season and your overall thoughts as being coach of uh, the Blind River Beavers. Uh, it's probably our best year regular wise since I've been here, honestly. You know, um, we had a really hot start. We sputtered a little bit, but ever since we came back from Christmas, our, our record has kind of shown how well we've been playing. So we're really excited for these playoffs with, uh, you know, the team we have and, you know, how things have been going of late. And you're, and you're playing the Sioux Thunderbirds. I, I think one of probably the biggest rivalries you guys have in the NOJHL. And you're, I think you're five and five with the team. And that five of your wins, four of your wins came out of four of the five wins came in the new year. Is that something to do with the trade deadline or just the way you guys progress? Uh, you know, we didn't make very many movements heading up to the deadline. We kind of liked our team. And, you know, I think it's just kind of how we progressed as a group, right? Like the guys got comfortable with each other and, comfortable with the systems we were implementing so you know it all kind of came together for us after Christmas and you know that's when you want to be playing our best hockey. So we're happy with that right now and, and we're excited to play the Thunderbirds that's for sure and your goaltending tandem Gavin DeSanto Charlie Burns uh, for people who don't know I don't want to say they're stepbrothers but more or less to a point it's almost like that situation I guess um yeah, yeah. talk about that goaltending tandem and is there a lot of rivalry in the dressing room and that in practice with those two uh, no, no, not really. They just, they're both competitors, um, you know, and, and, and like you said, they're, they're, they're stepbrothers. So they're there to support each other before they're uh, competing for a goalie spot. And I think it's really uh, helped them both along the way, especially Charlie, you know, 16 year old first year in the league and, you know, Gavin being with us for, for three years, kind of knows the lay of the land. So he's really helped him become uh, the goalie he's been. And, 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 and with that, Gavin just really stepping up and kind of grabbing the net moving forward has been uh, fun to watch as well. And and Charlie, like you say, he played, he dressed for uh, the Niagara Ice Dogs in the OHL a little bit this year. And what does that say a little bit about your program of a 16-year-old going to the OHL and actually seeing some ice time? Yeah, you know, that that's good for our program for sure. It definitely helps in my recruiting pitch uh, in the off season. But, uh, you know, we're... Got to give a lot of credit to, uh, you know, our goalie coach, Jamie DeZano, uh, you know, getting him ready to go day in, day out. And, you know, being able to go up to the OHL and compete at that level is, you know, says a lot about Charlie and, you know, the work he's put in this season. So, you know, if it helps me get uh, a couple more goalie recruits down the line, I'll definitely take it. Exactly. And let's talk a little bit about Caleb Mims, graduating player um, from Baxter, Ontario, four seasons with you, 58 games this year. Uh, 84 points, third year, third in scoring the NLJHL. Talk a little bit about Mins. Uh, you know, he's one of those guys for us, right? He's a big play guy. And he continues to make them moving forward. Uh, completely uh, transparent with you. We had a conversation uh, before the break about having an impact in games that 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 matter, and and he kind of took that to heart. And you know, I can tell you when we got back from Christmas, he was the only guy providing offense for us. So, um, you know, if he wasn't scoring. I'm not sure we have the success in the second half of the season that we've had. He's, he's a guy we rely on heavily for offense, and we're going to do the same moving into this series. And, and talking a little bit going on the rookie side, Gavin, I think, is it Rocha? Yep. Um, talk a little bit about his rookie season, what he's brought to your roster this season. Yeah, he's had a really good year. He, he really reminds me of a, you know, a, a young Jake Kovacs when he first came into the league, the kind of you know energy he brings. And, and the motor he brings to our, uh, you know, our ice surface every time we step on it. He, he, he doesn't have a lot of off games, and even his off games, he's still creating havoc because of his speed. He's like a little water bug out there. So, um, and he's definitely getting on the score sheet. So, you know, he's been a big part to our team. You know, obviously our first line center, and you know, as a 17-year-old kid, that's a lot of weight to bear. But he doesn't seem to be bothered by it at all. And you, you mentioned Kovacs, and me and you have this running joke about Sioux kids and playing in Blind River. Yep. But has anything been mentioned about the Sioux kids in Blind River knowing that they're playing kids that they grew up with? Uh, I, I don't hear it. And if it happens, it's in the room out of, out of earshot for me. But I'm sure that gives them a little bit extra jump in their step, you know, playing against buddies or kids they've grown up playing with. Uh, you know, I, I know it would do the same for me, so I don't think my guys are any different. And you're now changing gears a little bit and talking about the playoffs starting tomorrow night against the Thunderbirds in BR. Talk a little bit about th this series coming up and what you're expecting from from your guys and your roster. 
Uh, you know, I'm I'm expecting them to compete because if we don't compete against the Sioux team, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. Um, you know, we we finished five and five in the regular against them. We're we're a very match team um, all throughout the lineup. So um, somebody's going to have to step up. Somebody's going to have to be a difference maker, and I'm excited to see who that's going to be. And when you're talking about that, like I said, one of my questions is stepping up. Not that you're trying to call out any players, but is there somebody you're expecting to step up starting tomorrow night? Uh, I'm not even sure if I can call it stepping up, but I think just continuing to do what he's been doing is Andre Manoff, um, a defenseman for us. He he seems to be a game changer every time he touches the puck. So we're hoping to him to continue to do that in this series. And you know when he's on and, and he's making plays and, and creating you know something from nothing, he's really really hard to contain. So. You know, if he's doing that kind of stuff, we're, uh, you know, I think we'll be okay. And and, and talking about going up against the Thunderbirds, um, again, for people who don't know, you used to coach the Thunderbirds and you stepped into the role of the head coach in Blind River. Yep. Is this the first time that it's the series is opening up at home for you guys against the Thunderbirds since you've been with the organization? Yeah, yes, it has. I think we played them three times in the first round, and this is the, the first time it starts at the dam. So we're excited. You know, our crowd attendance has been up the last, uh, you know, month of the regular season. We're hoping to have this place rocking on Thursday. So, and as a coach, is that a little bit more, a little bit more oomph, like say, starting here this year? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I, I, you know, I like to think we got the best fans in the league, and you know, I, I know it gets me excited when there's a full house, and hopefully that, uh, you know, it helps us uh, have success in game one. And playing at the dam again, a little bit different, a little bit closer quarters, so it's a. Uh, home team advantage or home ice advantage for you, right? Yeah, definitely. I know that some teams uh, have a hard time here with our neutral zone and, and you know, less time and space. But the Thunderbirds have been playing here for years. They know what this rink's about. I don't think that's uh, that's going to be the difference maker. We just, you know, we got to show up. We got to compete. We got to ma- match their intensity because, you know, they bring it every night. So I think if we do that, the, this is going to be a really fun series to watch for the fans. And, with, again, seven-game series. For some reason, when the, the orange and blue play against the red and black, it's a physical series. How do you keep your guys under wraps with discipline when it comes to facing the Thunderbirds? Uh, I think we just keep preaching it, right? Like, you know, we don't we don't have a remote controller that uh, tells them to do or what not to do out there. But, you know, I think they, uh, they realize that uh, the threats that the Thunderbirds have on the power play with Chaff and Brock and, you know, guys like that and McConnell Barker. So... I think uh, the message from us was let's play five on five. Let's not give those uh, skilled players, you know, time and space to make skilled plays. So, you know, if we're if we're able to stay out of the box and play five on five, then you know I think it'll be a really good game. Last question: What's it going to take to uh, to win the West Division semifinal against the Thunderbirds? Uh, we got to show up for every game. Um, we can't have any off nights. We can't, uh, you know, have any mental lapses. We got to continue to play at the level we've been playing at. And, uh, you know, I think if we do that, then there is a chance that we're going to have success here. So we're excited for the challenge. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm definitely excited at being one of my former teams. And we're uh, really excited to go against Cole and his team here. And last thing is coming down to the dam for, for fans who want to watch the game. Is, can you buy tickets early or do they have to buy them at the door? No, oh, we're, we're going to buy them at the door. Try and create a little bit of a buzz here and a little bit of a lineup look uh look uh, intense for when the T-Birds come in. So we're uh, we're hoping the best fans in the league can come out in, uh, in numbers and help us through this first game. Well, thank you very much and good luck tomorrow night and uh, hopefully we can talk post-game. Always a pleasure, Jay. Thanks.